I'm going to start a recording now and uh, we'll go to the PowerPoint that I've got prepared with some of your uh, things that you've sent in. I've got a few on there myself. Uh, we gave a challenge last month to try to do a frog or a butterfly or something. And not everybody does the challenge thing, but some of you have been working on things. So we've got uh, evidence that you are actually still burning. And I want us to be able to talk about it, maybe give some suggestions tonight. There's a couple of people that uh, wanted to come into this meeting, but we're having trouble uh, with their, like they're going different places with their business, with their life. But in doing the biography, the problem is with shading. And so what I suggested to, was Agnes that we're writing back and forth to, is that we may on our uh, biography meetings uh, have one of you uh, do a demonstration. Keith, I'm thinking of you especially. And do a demonstration with your camera work over your piece and uh, give us a demonstration of what shading is like in your world on the piece. So it may be just to be a piece of wood where you're showing different methods of the shading, uh, building up the different layers and that kind of thing. So it's just one thought. Another one is to talk more uh, with more depth about the pieces. It's not that it's just a nice piece that you're presenting, but uh, maybe ask more in, uh, more in-depth questions about one particular part. And if you're brave enough, tell us where you had problems. I try to tell you where my problems are, and there's lots of them always. <laughs> so uh, you'll see examples of it even when I do some of that demonstration tonight. So that's one of the thoughts, first off, to share with you. And the second thing is, uh, with the response that we're having over the summertime and suspecting now as the club startup that we may be uh, less numbers that would be available each month. And what I'm finding too is that as I talk to different people in the pyro world is that they're not doing a lot of that steadily. I'm kind of an exception to that. I just keep burning away. But what we're suggesting is maybe not have a meeting in September, but have one in October. So it'd be about every two months. It gives a chance for you to do some work. And in the case of uh, Sylvain going away, you'll find more picnic tables on the way and maybe not have many picnic tables. <laughs> yes, so, yes, it gives me more time. <laughs> gives you a little bit more time to do that kind of thing. So uh, uh, regarding the uh, challenges, the reason for doing that was to try to expand, give somebody some direction as to uh, the thing that they're working on and experiment with different problems. So when Holly came on and told us about the dandelion, I thought, whoa, that's going to be a change for me. I've never thought of doing something like a dandelion. I think they're pretty, they're cute, they're ugly, they're nasty. They're in my lawn all month of June and drive me nuts. But I tried to do some work with a dandelion and then I inserted a bug or two. So it, uh, it, it just kind of expands my way of doing things. Up to that time, I'm, I'm still doing the same things I did before. I do pictures of dogs or sometimes cats. I did an awful lot of wild animals and uh, wild creatures like that. But I notice as I look back on the pieces that I've collected, that the thing that's happened is that I was in the same rut or the same groove or the same thing every time. Uh, sure, I could do a dog in a heartbeat. I could draw the dog with a pencil, with charcoal. Uh, I can do it easily that way, but with the biography, it meant that I had to uh, look a little closer. And in the need to get it done, I sometimes went too fast and missed an opportunity to make even a better picture and make a better uh, scene of it. So a lot of that has been changed as I've watched some of the videos I've seen online about shading and how to use your shaders and talking to listening to somebody like Holly saying that she uh, uses basically one tool, a shader, and then she moves it very quickly over the paper with one temperature, one level of burning. And it's just a matter of touching, uh, going slower or faster or uh, longer on one piece of the wood to make it darker. So experimenting with just somebody making a comment like that really changed my way of looking at the pyro work. And uh, it's definitely made a difference in what I'm doing. Number one, it slowed me down. <laughs> I learned that you can't go fast if you want to have something that looks reasonable. And then I met Keith Kirkham. 
And I've watched him over his shoulder in seeing what he's doing in his pyro work. And Keith doesn't work very fast. He's really slow. Aren't you, Keith? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's taught me something, too, that maybe I got to slow down a little bit and uh, work at something to get the better detail from it. And I think the other thing that's come out of it was taking pictures that I'm not familiar with. Like a dog's is no problem. And cats, I've, I've uh, drawn those pictures for 50-some years. Back when I lived in Quebec, I was making, I don't know, my salary at the company I worked with was maybe somewhere around $200 a week, which was pretty big at that time in 1967, 66. But at night, I was making over $100 a night drawing cat pictures. I could draw four or five cats a night, do them really fast, and people bought them like crazy. So fast has always been my way to do things. And then I come into biography and there's nothing fast about this craft. This is one slow Joe go. <laughs> and so that's some of the thoughts that I have. So first thing I'll go back to you and ask the question with a thought of uh, every two months, every second month at least of having a pyro meeting, how does that go with you? Or do you want to continue doing once a month? Lloyd Thomas, how about you? First off again. I'm good with every two months. That sounds pretty good. It gives me more time to work on stuff um, because I've got so much other stuff on the go. Anybody else want to contribute something to thought on that? Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, uh, two months is good for me too, yeah. Brett, how about you? Two months is fine. So then? It's two months. Two months is very good, actually. Okay. Then, Keith, you just have to come along whether you like it or not. Two months it's is it. It's time to uh, <laughs> work on some project. Ma yeah, majority <laughs> rules. Uh, I think two months would be fine. And, and perhaps if we can, if there's something special like a demonstration or a, a show and tell or, or something in between, then, then uh, we can put it in the alternate months that where there's nothing scheduled. Great. So some suggestions that I thought of when uh, Holly gave a demonstration of some of the, the trees doing the small figure eights to make the leaves. Uh, that was one suggestion. So uh, when I've started looking at some of these things close up, the things that I've been doing is looking closer at your topic. It's not just the shape and size, but it's really getting down to the nitty gritty of a thing. So that topic alone is doing the study of what you're going to draw. Finding a place you start with on that piece. So there's a whole realm to talk about in that area. How about Robert, what do you feel? Yes, well, I, -wise. I uh, tried, uh, I did a pyro, I had done one before and I did the same, same one, but I tried Holly's figure eight on the leaves and it really worked out good. I got the sort of the knack of it and uh, turned out good. And one thing that's happening on our uh, Facebook page that Keith has set up, uh, Keith has found resources and he's been posting some of the links for the videos and the ideas about the biography. So uh, checking that out and maybe if you see something on there that uh, would be something that we're interested to, to do as a topic in one of our meetings and have an opportunity maybe before we have our uh, meeting in an evening, everybody to look at the video and then either comment on it or see what you found out from it. And that yeah, Laura I, is one person that Keith's referred to recently, right? Okay. Just Yeah, go ahead, Keith. Yeah, no, just to comment that uh, uh, a few days ago, I posted a link to uh, uh, sort of a beginner's how-to session that Laura Irish had done on her website. I don't know if anybody's looked at her website. She has literally hundreds of pages of different things. She does uh, uh, relief carving. She does chip carving. She does pyrography. 
she does painting, she does so darn many different things and she mixes them all up together. And uh, she's got uh, an, an excellent selection of pyrography patterns. A lot of them are free. Uh, it's, it's just, a, uh, it, it's, it's one of those damn websites where you get, in, get into it and you're, you're stuck for hours. It's a real, uh, uh, chews up a whole part of a day. But uh, anyhow, uh, Laura Irish is her name and uh, it, it's, uh, I, I wish I knew how many hours I've, of my life I've spent looking at her stuff, but uh, uh, certainly- I wanted to check her out. Quite, Keith, quite I checked a, her out about a. I checked her out about a month ago, and her website. Oh, yeah. I checked her out a month ago, and her website was down. Is oh, that possible? It's possible. Question for you: Have have all of you seen or joined our Facebook group? It's OWCA. I'm there. Face, uh, biography. Oh, I have it. Facebook yep. great. The fa the Facebook site is great. I think that's a good way to sort of pass on more information if we're just doing it every two months. I think mm -hmm. that works great. Uh, is it, is it you, Keith? With it. Go ahead. Hey, Keith, is it you that posted the um, pyrography magazine uh, group that you can join? Is, did you put that on the our, um, our Facebook mm, site? I might have. I... Anyway, I, I picked it up there, I think. Oh, that's it there. And I joined yeah, right. that. That's it. Yeah. So the pyrography magazine is uh, quite something. Uh, it's a Facebook yeah. group. And oh my God, there's a lot of talent out there. So mm -hmm. I, put, I joined that and I posted on that uh, yesterday. A few of my things I did because I'm just starting out. But it's very positive people and there's a lot of things across the world. So it's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. I've, I've seen that and I'm a member of that one as well. Yes. That's ours. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And Keith, you said you're going to put that into an ebook. I think that's one suggestion. Well, no, somebody, uh, one, whoever was originally posted it, it was on another pyrography group. And uh, they said they were going to make it into an ebook. I haven't seen it come up yet. Yeah. But uh, that was the magazine from 1890 or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, as, the story I read about it in the pictures I saw, well, I think it was in New York City. They had a, the building would be a mammoth size. Like it was a whole block long and maybe three or four stories high. And it was all dedicated to making the instruments and the tools and the work for uh, wood burning. And then they had a fire and burned it down. <laughs> yes, yes. Because they're using those alcohol lamps. It's uh, the heating the tips up, I guess. That's right. And uh, the company that that picture, Murray, that you gave me, that's that's uh, our our homepage picture on on our website. Uh, right. Something and Thayer. Is, is the name of the company that was doing the, uh, uh, that was making the pyrography machine. I think that's the one you got there, isn't it? That's it right there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, anyhow, they got, uh, after they, things didn't work out so well for pyrography machines, they ended up making airbrushes and they got bought out by Badger Airbrush. So uh, that's what's happened to them. So some, some interesting hi history in our business, but. Yeah, that's for sure. Now I'm gonna do a share screen right now and look at some of the pieces that uh, we have for this month. And uh, let me just do the slideshow here. Start from the beginning. And this is our, I'm gonna reduce this thing so it's just on talking mode. And Brian Graham is not here tonight, but he uh, sent these in as part of his work. And I'm gonna go through just to show you a few of his pictures here. I think we have maybe three. And to go back over these for, for a moment, 
Then you'll see the butterflies. Now he, I think of that. Oh, is, very nice. It's probably a piece of basswood, I think, from the look of it. And is there any suggestions as you look through these, uh, what catches your eye or perhaps one of the things that might make a difference for you? My guess is that's probably a plywood box originally, right? More like a poplar or something of that sort, pretty plain green. Yeah. But Brian's a brave person to put color into this. <laughs> Any comments for Brian? Because he'll be looking at this video later. I'd like to have a session on adding color to your pyography. That would be a good session to do. Yeah. Yes, it would. That's a great idea. There's a limit to how much color you put into it, too. I think that's my problem is it seems to be all or nothing. And I've seen people just put a tiny bit of color into the thing. And the other thing I think that happens when I look at these pictures, if this was in a show or a demonstration on one of the tables that Brian would be a part of, it's similar to what I've done, is that these pictures on these screens make the pyrography piece become very, very large. And you can see a lot of detail where if it's further away from your eyes, kind of you don't see the detail, you just see the beauty of the bird, of the butterfly. Mm -hmm. there, nobody at the table ever takes a magnifying glass and comes up too close to it. And we'll just see here, Brett, uh, Brett, would you like to tell us a little bit, this has got a history to it and more to come. Yeah, my neighbor is um, the herbal touch and they have bees, so I go over there and teach them about beekeeping a little bit, but she used to be on TV, um, on HGTV on a gardening show. Anyways, they have a fairy, um, a fairy festival every summer, similar to what you do, Murray. Yeah. And um, so I wanted to do something for them. And so I thought the frog and the, and the monarch was perfect. So I made a fairy monarch uh, princess riding a frog. So that's what that is. I still want to put some milkweed in behind her, um, but that's going to wait until the weather cools down a bit because my shop's not air conditioned. So. Uh, so just how do you feel working on the end grain of a piece of wood like that? That looks like a slab. Yeah, it is. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not too bad. I didn't have a lot of issues with it, and it's still not darkened uh, to finished grade yet. Um, so I still have more work to do on it. I wanted to wait until I got the milkweed in to, to uh, just hone it in a little bit more. So it's just burning with a lot less heat. And I'm starting to get into the ability to, to do the um, one setting and then just move your tool a little bit slower. Now, so just a question about the wings on the butterfly or the wings of the, the princess. Uh, these are not yet shaded in there. It just looks darker where the lighter colors would be. That, have you shaded that, or is that just the wood behind? No, that, that has, has a shading in all the pieces, and it is a little bit darker than the wood. The photo doesn't show it, but I have started to shade it all in. Same with the frog. It's all shaded in. It's just I haven't finished shading it fully yet, so... So he'll be sitting on the lily pad or, or whatever down below me. Eh? Yes. Yeah. And then I'll have the milkweed in the background. Any other thoughts or comments there for Brett? I like the composition. I think that's a great idea that the way it is. I love those, those fantasy things. And that one's just perfect. Thank you. Well, thank you, Brett. Let's move to the next one here, and it's Keith Kirkham, and this one kind of blows me away. Keith sent this to me, and I thought, whoa, Keith has become a carver and a biographer at the same time. It was really something, and then he described what happened. Keith, tell us more. That's uh, 
Just Is that carved a, wood? Perfectly flat piece of wood. There's uh, no chisels involved. It's it's. Uh, I I saw the picture on Pinterest. Uh, it's a relief carving. Uh, at least the picture was on Pinterest. I I said, well, I can do that without uh, uh, without any uh, without any carving because I'm not a carver. And uh, it's it's a work in progress. It's it's all done with shading, and uh, uh, again, as I said, it's a work in progress. There's still lots to do on it yet, but uh, it, I, it was kind of a kind of a fun uh, uh, fun project to be working on. Hey, and geez, what I did too is I didn't uh, upright this thing and like turn it to the right. I felt it was better to lay it on a side like this and let everybody see closer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you've, yeah. you've incorporated there kind of stippling some places, uh, pointillism down at the bottom of the picture. There's some black dots and stuff there, but on some of the flowers that are nearby, it shows your, the movement of your pen. Like they're, mm -hmm. they're longer strokes that show there. Mm-hmm. And it gives the idea, yeah. the feeling I have, that's chisel marks. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Work. Nice work, Keith. That, I, I really impressed with that. Oh, thank you. It's uh, like I said, it, it's it's uh, really fun to do. I did it. I had a piece of uh, basswood with uh, live edge, and I didn't. Uh, my picture isn't lined up perfectly in 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 the. Uh, mm -hmm the the uh, between the edges of, of the the wood so anyhow maybe when it's standing on uh, upright it I I'm going to be hopeful that it'll look a little better but uh, uh, like I said it was just an idea I had and uh, uh, it's been me, an awful lot of let me tell you yeah let me tell you Keith it's a great idea and it's impressive I'm impressed with this beautiful work beautiful. Mm -hmm. so first look at it, it looks like a carving. Yes. It really does. The, yeah, the shading, I didn't, I didn't the cut shading myself on. Awesome. Now, Keith, when you did the, the bottom, it, down below the two birds, their legs, yep. uh, the little dots and squigglies that are there, uh, was that in the original picture? Is that something you put in to kind of emphasize your own way or what? It's uh i couldn't figure out exact it was kind of wavy i think they're they're standing in water and it was just little ripples and i i i thought it'd be better just to shade it in like that and and uh not draw too much attention to it yeah and well, what holly used the term and i think that's what we do in, in cartooning or illustrating they call it cross hatching mm-hmm when you do the little marks evenly beside each other and it makes the shadow from behind or it kind of fills in a space to be a, a shadow under the character. And that, what you created there is kind of a crosshatch. It, it is a bit. It's, it's, I did kind of a stipple and then I went over it with a flat shader uh -huh. to darken it up. And uh, you notice that the, the, what's the bottom of that picture is quite a bit darker than the top, and and I still have to go back in and uh, and go over the top part around the the uh, the flowers themselves, darken that up up a bit just to even it out. No, you know, like we we all talk about what happens with the patine effect, where the wood burning uh, seems to disappear because the wood changes color behind, and then it takes away some of by that wood changing color. Some of the lighter strokes that you uh, put onto the wood disappear because they're the same color as the wood. It's not mm -hmm. really gone. And if I wait too long on my biography pieces and try to go back and touch them up or catch up, my new burning is definitely different than the old. Yes. So you can't wait too long. <laughs> Keith, that's really quite amazing. I'm I'm really impressed with that. You're going to no. put us relief. You're going to put us relief carvers out of business here. 
<laughs> yeah, stay out of my my apple orchard. <laughs> I, anyway. I didn't cut myself with my chisel once. <laughs> That's like a bad, dirty word to call a biographer, call a chiseler. <laughs> <laughs> Well, great. Thank you, Keith. Now I'm going to go next picture here. You sent me. It's uh, oh. a longer piece. And what I've done for this to show this off today is it's showing the whole picture here. And as I go to the next shot, and we'll come back to this one in a minute. The next shot is just the top part. And really see a lot of the stipple effect in that one and the different kind of shading. And then the next one has just the bottom and the uh, stork. So I'll go back here, Keith, to the first picture and give us a little description of what's going on here. It's uh, 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 actually, this kind of came up from a need. We needed a clock in our house. So I thought I'd do a clock and I, I uh, uh, we'd just gotten rid of the, the loon picture that was on our wall or my daughter took it. And so I needed uh needed two things i needed a clock and the loon so uh i i thought i'd put them both together on on one piece and uh uh that again is it's sort of a, it's a work in progress i'm doing a, a a basket weave border and uh there's a lot of work i need to do on that yet and uh so it's it's a work in progress. Some, some of it's done. Some of it needs to go back and be redone, scratched out and redone. And uh, uh, anyhow, I just went and got the clock mechanism today. And so I, I'm just working towards getting it finished. I'm gonna- So uh, around the clock where the numbers are, you've left it a little bit light. Is that gonna be a letter that's attached to that or you're going to- that's, the just number. where I'm going to put I'm going to put the number numbers on. They won't be burnt uh, on, eh? Yeah, I'm 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 only going to do one, three, six, and nine for numbers, and the others are going to be dots. But I just left left it light to to put them them on, uh -huh. and uh, the sh the shading on the uh, the the darts. Uh, I have to go over that and, and make it a lot more even. No. Like the, the 12 o'clock there, you see that's kind of really, really messy. And describe to us this, this, this stippling, which I say is kind of like a pointillism. You put the little dots all over at different uh, burning levels, like some hot, some cold. Yes. You see around the 12 o'clock top piece there, it's a little darker than some of the other ones are, but uh, when you come down the inside, below the number one and below 11, and then all the other ones, the odd numbers, uh, that's a very interesting kind of, uh, uh, would you call that background or cross-hatching, or how would you describe that? It's just, uh, it's sort of hatching, except I used kind of wavy, wavy lines. I drew, drew curved lines in uh, by eye about every half inch or so. And then uh, I went over those with the pen and drew a, a curved wave. And then I filled in by eye in, in between the, uh, the, the lines I did every half inch or so. Do you use a compass to put those, those uh, curved lines in? No, I didn't. I just, I just did it by eye. And no shaky and hands. I, I, I yeah. Yeah, yeah. With my tremors I've got in my hands, I, it wasn't too hard. But uh, <laughs> it. Uh, you mentioned that you'll go back over this and do a scratch out to take away the air. Is, is there any examples at the like up at the top there? On the in the the twelve o'clock uh, pie segment there, you see that's that's uh, quite blotchy, and uh, it, it's. The most Moving on that that area there. Yep, that's it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The big blotch here compared to the other parts. And that's that's something that I don't know. After all the years, well, after the time I've been doing pyrography, I, I'm still 
still doing blotches when I do shading and uh, uh, Holly can talk about that and uh, uh, the work I've done with Julie Bender, they both know that, that that's what I do. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to learn to be better and it's, my head's kind of thick. But I think one of the things that say Keith is I found that uh, as much as I can read the wood and think it through, there are areas of the wood when it's cut and the way it grew naturally will be softer, no matter if, even if it's a hardwood, it does that. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. burns quicker. Yep. Yeah. If you look in the, the, uh, the border, the basket weave border, across the top, my sh shading is, is fairly even. And down the left-hand side, it's not, not so good. It's, uh, there's some dark blotches that shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, again, I'm going to have to go back and scratch that out. I've been a, a, probably a good student of different methods of, of uh, getting rid of those dark blotches. And uh, I, I've gone to all sorts of different things, uh, sand erasers. Uh, another thing that I've used is uh, uh, auto, auto body shops use something called the sanding pen. And it's pretty good for uh, erasing burn marks off of pyrography. Uh. And... Uh, is that the little one that looks like a pen that can go in your pocket, but it's got a, a circular kind of quarter inch wide sandpaper on it? It's it, no, it's got uh, it. It's like a pen, and inside, in it's like a marker, but instead of having a felt marker with ink in it, it's got a bundle of fiberglass. Uh. And uh, uh, I, I've uh, I've learned that from a lady in North Carolina, Michelle Parsons. And, uh, or did I? No, no, I didn't. That, I, that, that's another story. But uh, anyhow, it's available on Amazon. If you, you do a search for sanding pen, that's what comes up. And uh, it's not too bad for erasing uh, uh, dark spots off of, off of pyrography pictures. Uh, just a thought I had here is I wonder, I'd like to try basket weave and try to do just a basket perhaps and see what I can come up with. Just a, that's a really good challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I got it off a, a picture I'd, I'd uh, found on Pinterest with, uh, it was a picture of uh, the King Tut's mask and uh, the fellow that did it had had uh, it was a very nice burning, and he'd put this this basket weave pattern around it. And I I did it. Uh, I did the mask and uh, w with the border, and I, I thought I was looking for a border for this, and uh, that that kind of came to mind immediately was to to make a nice border, and it. It's something I'm always looking for now is designs for borders. So just to, for the others watching and listening to this, have you got any questions for Keith? Well, Keith, I'll have to come to your place and be a border. I learned off you. <laughs> Keith, just um, yeah. you keep track of, you keep track of the time you spend on a project or you just do it no i don't you keep time i don't no, keep okay and then, and so it's a question when, I, when i'm demonstrating at a show everybody asks me how how long did that picture yes. take i i hate to say it but i make a number up you i say 40 or 50 hours <laughs> but yes um, yes yeah but I, no, I do it's the same i'm a chip my, yeah yeah, I understand. the The thing is, what do you run more than one project at a time, or do you? It's I, more focused. You do one and you finish it and move on. I've probably got eight projects on the go right now, and it's it's a bit of bit of concern. My wife has been cleaning up my work area, and uh, I'm 
uh, oh. catch a bit of negative feedback from her about that. <laughs> uh, we're all married to the same kind of persons. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Sometimes when I tell my Thank wife you. I have a great idea, but she said, how old are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, the next Keith, part of the picture. You're, you're very you're a great pyrographer well thank Keith, you you're a great pyrographer it's beautiful what you do beautiful it's, uh, thank you i if, if you talk to hall i've i've done quite a few uh sessions that holly has taught and uh uh she she confirms my opinion that i still have a lot to learn <laughs> I'm, I'm, now, is this fellow finished or is he going to be worked on further going to be worked on a little further i'd i'd uh uh need to darken the head up according to to my wife and on the the body on the left hand side those uh uh shading needs to be darkened up a bit this part here but uh, uh, yeah, but otherwise it, it's uh, it's pretty well complete. I'm actually quite really quite pleased the way the uh, uh, the beak has turned out on that. I I would like to uh, uh, I've had a suggestion about the eyes painting uh, part of the eye red, and then uh, the guy one of our our. Uh, uh, very senior bird carvers in our, our group suggested that and putting some epoxy over top of it to give, give it the sheen. No, a question in just a thought here that I have a tendency if I try to do a loon and it's got a black head, I make the head black. But you've not done that and it still looks black. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and and again, this this is uh, a picture, a copy of a picture that I found on uh, uh, on Pinterest, and it's uh, it it's uh, it, I guess it's probably a it's either a pen and ink drawing or a pencil sketch. I'm not sure which, but it's it's a very very uh, striking picture of a loon. Any comments or questions for Keith? I think we put everybody to sleep, Keith. Yep. Well, here comes one that if you can That's remember, cool. this is what he looked like. Now, when you look at this, do you see the problems I would run into? If you were doing it, what problems do you see first? What challenges? The, the actual light, it's the light. How do you get the actual light? That's one of the things that, uh, when I look at this, is how do you keep it to really shine, to get that light? Mm -hmm. One of the areas I struggled yeah. with, I'll tell you right now, before we go back to the other picture, is under the frog's chin. Yes. And part of that comes from uh, when he does his croaking or his calling or whatever with his vocal cords, that thing expands out and in. And so it's got to look like a piece of leather, but like a piece of skin, like a thin skin. And when I saw this photograph, I thought, well, there's going to be a challenge because you get the bone structure of the jaw which is very, very small. And then you have kind of the lighting reflecting either through the top of the head or somehow maybe this bright light, whatever it is, comes through to that translucent kind of effect. And the other part of it is that I wanted to be able to get, Sylvan, as you mentioned, the, the lighting issues are something definitely I saw right off the bat, but I wanted to get the structure of the frogs skull especially that top area between the two eyes and you'll see it raised there a little bit and then 
his he's got this kind of a kissable lip <laughs> the frog prince <laughs> And uh, then you go down to the little hands, uh, the front paws on the on the left side of the picture, and unique dimples where those like it's almost like a nail on a regular fingernail. Each one of the back and front uh, nails on this particular frog have got that little indentation, but it's surrounded with a little U-shaped kind of almost a boomerang or two um, pieces of. Uh, almost like pieces of uh, rice kernels. And then you'll see his muscles up the right side of the back, the right side of the picture, that back leg coming over, the muscles or tendons in that little tiny foot. Uh, I, when I said, I wanna try this and I started looking at it closer, I said, what did I do this for? Oh. But it was a problem, challenge. And you go back to, here's what it came up. You can see right away some of the areas I mentioned, what I tried to get was interesting. Any questions or thoughts about it? You can help me better. I, I like it. It's, it's awesome piece of work. Did you convert the color to a black and white picture? No, I just used the, uh, for a, just a, the colored picture. I, what I actually did when I, when I do these kind of characters or creatures, I take a piece of paper the size of my, uh, that the frog is personally there. And I have the frog on my uh, little, uh, not iPad, but my pad, the tablet. And I turn the lights down, and it's got a bright light from the coming from that onto the white paper, and very lightly with a pencil, I'll outline the frog, just the outside edges, and anything distinctive that I want to show on the things. Then I take a pencil or I take a, a pair of scissors and cut out my rough drawing from that piece of paper. I lay that piece of paper onto the uh, piece of wood, in this case, it was a piece of uh, a plywood. And I, and I lightly draw to kind of get the position of where the frog would sit or where he was. And so his head tilted the right way. And as I do that, then I start to work on where I started on this frog, this particular one, I started on the top eye. That one's up right underneath my name, Lincoln there, you'll see the eye. And that was a challenge. Once I get one piece of it done, I work on that, and then I work out from there. So I worked out from his eye, the top, and it would be his left eye. And then I went down to the right eye. Now I realized right away because of the different kind of wood that's in the plywood, different grain area, the top one came out a lot darker than the bottom one did. And it may well be just because the photograph here didn't pick it up the right light. Uh, when you see it in person, it looks better than it does in this photograph by far. But the, the stark reality of a, of a photograph kind of uh, stops it in midair. And as you look at it, then you'll see some of the areas. So as I go back now, just to look at this other, the frog, you'll see the round parts on the back, those little yellow beads. They're not clear. They're kind of fuzzy. And so I didn't try to make them perfectly clear. And I don't know if how they're rounded. If they stick up, they seem to be like a bead or some sort of a defense mechanism on the thing, almost like a toad has. I didn't know well enough what this frog was all about. So I just tried to imitate it. So uh, coming back to the picture again that I did were little tiny round circles that are kind of like the round circles, almost the same amount that's on the other, on the photograph. But where I lost it was trying to interpret those toes and the fingers and a lot of other things on it. <laughs> Just being honest about it. But when you got the color, you have almost like the shading. But when I try to do the shading on the thing, I was the chances where I was going to lose the leg. So I didn't put enough shading on it. But I got kind of the tendon showing a little bit or the substructure of the hand or the foot uh, there. So any constructive criticism or Real criticism. How would it work, Murray, if you took a black and white picture and then went off of it instead of a colored one? 
Would that yeah. make any difference? It might make a real difference because it would interpret those uh, those colors. Uh, the danger of it is that have to. Well, I've got I have a computer program like a, a, a photo pad. It's called. And as you put the thing on, you can do the equalization thing and slide, do the slider. So the picture just changes as you slide and you can get the amount of dark black and white or grayscale is what I would probably do. I like it, Maria, it looks pretty good. Is that uh, the background that's all dark? Is that all wood burn too? Yeah, that's wood burn. That's kind of a stippling. I try to make sure that my burn marks are equal all over. But if you can, I don't know if you can see it on your screen or not, but between the two eyes, about a little bit above the top of the middle of his skull, you see an extra dark piece? Okay. Well, you see that kind of a shiny thing there? It's, a, it's got two white spots in it. It's a little bit, it may be in reality, about almost a quarter inch across when I get it. You'll see closer to the head, you'll see a round circle and then further from the head, you'll see another round circle with that black thing in the middle. Well, that to my surprise, that was a blemish in the wood that they put filler into. Mm. My shader scooted over that, and all of a sudden, I got a puff of smoke. <laughs> and I, I was burning sawdust or something else or something really weird smelling. It wasn't wood, but it was my little surprise in that piece of wood that I didn't know about. Mm. But I found that when, when you do a stippling, if you don't, if you go to the bottom right side of it, of the picture, you'll see the even, um, not stippling, but the, the burning. So you're doing kind of a circle burning and mixed with moving to the next level. So I'm trying to keep the background looking the same, all left to right. So it's not just one area is burned with a great big flat tip, and another one burned with a smaller tip. It's all the same. Murray, could I make a comment? Yep. Uh, one difference I'm noticing between your picture and the photograph, the underside of the frog's uh, mouth and the chin and, and neck is quite light, whereas in the picture, it's quite dark. And actually in the, in the photograph where it's quite dark, it, you really don't, it, it, you can't see what's going on there too well. And uh, oops, this is just the wrong one here. Go back the other way here. And it, 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 uh, you, you kind of, you sort of lose between the, the, that part of the frog and the shadow on, on, uh, the, the branch or whatever it's on. You, you, you can't see much detail. Right. And I think by leaving it light on in your picture, you've, you've, uh, actually improved it a fair bit and okay. that we'll go back again here got their own buttons pushing <laughs> yeah what i see if i could probably under the chin and also the top of the head if i went a little bit darker it would fit more together with the rest of the body eh, it might it might not but it's one thing i've learned from some very good teachers is that that when we're doing uh a, a wood burning from a photograph that we've got like in in uh, when they look at the color scale for black and white it goes from zero to eight or zero to ten or whatever but we can really any anything that's black we can portray as as white if it work makes our picture better or if it's if it's bright white we can put it as black or a, sh a shade of gray or or whatever that that we're when we do the pyrography we're we're the artist and and we can do whatever we want there as long as uh as as long as it uh uh makes sense and it doesn't even have to make sense so we can do whatever we want yeah that's helpful and, and that i think by lightening that up, you've uh, uh, you, you've improved it. Like we're we're we can see a lot more detail in that that chin, in that neck. Right. 
All right. might just darken it a bit more. I don't know how to do that exactly, yet, but bigger strokes and a bit more shading would be helpful there, but using the same shaded spots that I have, just enlarging them a bit. <laughs> it looks like this, the sun is coming at it on yours from a different angle than the one in the picture, but this one, it looks like this, like the sun is coming underneath his chin and where the other one, it looks like it's coming over his head, you know, for brightness. Right. The sun mm -hmm. is coming from the top left hand side, I think. Yes. Or the lighting. Yes. And now maybe I need more dark underneath the chin and further around the stick that he's on. Yeah. Oops, sir. I'm going to go to the butterflies. They keep wanting to come back. Now, these are these cheap uh, boxes that you can get from Michael's. And that's what I did my butterflies on. And adding the color to it. Oh, yeah. Hmm. It's, yeah, kind of, it's a fun thing to do. That's all it was. <laughs> yeah. But this what is. This, you, just, what's that? Sorry. Sorry. Just a question on that frog again. Um, would it help put putting color into it? Or how many people avoid, try to avoid color altogether? Yeah, it's a possibility because that green then compared to the yellow. If I could get a really light wash, that might help. Because mm -hmm. then you see on the on the frog's legs, the definition that I'm that I that I see in the picture. That's why I'm struggling with the shading, trying to get the green by a black shading. And where so you do most this people picture, avoid you coloring? At, do most people avoid coloring at all? I know your next one is a lot of color. I but. think it's a it's a personal preference and you got to know what you're doing when you color because <laughs> it can be really stupid looking <laughs> right okay i've had some disasters happen that I don't show anybody because it bleeds out into the grain of the wood if you don't have a stop burn at the edge and especially with shading okay okay thank you okay again this this is the soft uh I think it's kind of a mahogany. Uh, if you pressed your fingernail onto the top of it, you can make a mark. That's how soft this stuff is. So you gotta be really careful on how you burn it. Okay, I'm gonna go a little bit further here. And so close, a bit more different colors. These are water-based uh, markers. Now this is going to show you, because this is just plain fun. I'd flashed these onto a screen before one of our videos, but I wanted you to look at this thing. This is when you've got, you, your mind needs a break from all of the discipline of biography or the discipline of carving. And you pick up a stick from the edge of the shore and the lake is washed up, it's bleached in the sun, smoothed off with all the rocks and even has some stones stuck in it. So I don't carve these things. But it's just amazing what you can do with one simple piece of wood. Each one's got a different smell because they're each different kinds of wood, which I do not have a clue which. Have any of you tried something ridiculous like this? No. You're also disciplined to stay right to the loon or the goon. It was just a driftwood, eh? It's what? Just a driftwood? Yeah, just a driftwood. Okay. There's a close-up of it. Just simple designs. Rounded tip, kind of a ball tip I'd used on that one. The red color was actually in the wood when I cleaned it off. It's some of the heartwood. So they do it simply the same. I didn't change that. And that was our pictures as we came up with them. But you can use anything. And I'm not sure what you want to try a challenge for two months from now, or uh, I need some suggestions to think this through. I thought this guy would be fun to do. Look at all the little bumps on him up close. So, so Marie, um, if yeah. the, um, the next meeting is in October, yeah. uh, for some of us, we can actually work on the butterfly and the frog. We didn't have time to do because of uh, summer holidays. We were traveling. 
Right. But uh, what I like is tonight we discussed the uh, basket weaving. Yep. And I think maybe a little project with basket weaving could be added. And that would be a good challenge. Okay. What I want you to do, if you could, each one of you, do a little bit of a search on the internet to find out something that you think might be good for us. Pass it on to me and I'll get it in an email to everybody. Okay. And we might actually okay. be able to put that onto our Facebook page. That would be a good way to share it. Sure. So um, later when you're done the presentation, I might just do a little show and tell live instead of uh, the PowerPoint if you want. Yeah, sure. I would That's like to. PowerPoint, though. Okay. And by the way, welcome to Karen because she slipped in there when we were going. <laughs> Go ahead, Sylvan. Okay, so um, for the rest of the summer, for the next month, I will be uh, traveling with my RV. We're going to stay just in the uh, province of Quebec. We're going to leave Ottawa and go to the province of Quebec. And we had booked last winter, we were able to book some campsite. So I'm going to be doing some pyrography and so on. But I wanted to take my equipment with me. So when I do my pyrography, I do it on a drafting table in an angle. So I'm going to set up a similar thing, but I don't have my drafting table. So I just want to show you guys what my, uh, my plan is. So I'm just going to flip my camera around so I can actually show you. Usually when I do my pyrography, I, I do it on this drafting table, as you can see. And I just want to show you, I have progress on the one I show you. Right a while ago yeah i made some progress in, on it and last month i showed you this one i was doing and when i do my pyrography this is my equipment that i use i have a razor tip uh, with two pens the one that i interchange and this little guy here is a soldering uh extractor when you do some soldering for boards but it's great for the pyrography it pulls all the smoke away from me when i'm working it's a bit of a little noise, but it works great. So in order to get this same setup, I'm going to use this. My niece was using this old uh, things for artists that you actually, when it opens up, it's like an easel. Uh -huh. And I'm going to hold at the picnic table, I'll be able to hold my pyrography. And inside, I'll be able to store all my... Uh, my equipment so that's the project i'm planning i'm going to put that together and and use that to do my pyrography on the picnic table so i thought i would share that with you so if i'm traveling I'm, i can put all my burner and stuff in it and just go and keep it dry too when the rain suddenly comes on you <laughs> correct put everything back in and bring that back in the rv <laughs> so um, i i really hope to finish that uh, that church I was doing and I have a few other things I'm going to work on and in October I'll be able to share with everyone what I've been up to. Thank you so much for that. That's a great idea. Okay. Uh, Karen, tell us something about what you've been working on. We, we had quite a long discussion before we started to record but tell us what you've been doing over the summertime and maybe in your pyro work. Well, I really haven't been doing too much at all. <laughs> I just working and um, I help Ken with the Guelph club. So we're trying to get a room. So I've been kind of doing that, but that's it. I was just, I was going to say, I think that on your frog, if, it, if you color it, it would be awesome. May just give it a try. Yeah. No, you said has your club started up now? We're going to start in September. Uh, where Where are you located again? We're going to be at. Uh, ooh, we're going to a new building, just up past. Um, what's it called? Which one? Anyway, it's out of outside of Guelph, just uh, at a recreation center. So it's Guelph area you're in, eh? Yes, Guelph. Okay. And Peterborough's just started. Yeah. Keith was saying that Burlington's now going. 
So I think more clubs are going to start up in the fall. Yeah, you know, that's great. <laughs> any final comments then? Thank you for doing all this great work, Murray. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Takes a few hours to plan it, and then put the video after. It takes about another two hours. So I try to do it before I forget to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do, a, you do a great job, Murray. Well, we'll try to keep up to it. But I thoroughly enjoy what I've learned now from all of you and some of the work you're doing has been a great help to me personally.